Hello, welcome to Rob Paints Models and today's Hobby Essentials video. In this video I'm going to be going over everything you need to get started with airbrushing. Now airbrushing is probably the most expensive part of this hobby, outside of photography, but yeah. In terms of getting paint on models, airbrushing is the most expensive way to do it. A lot of people are interested in that, I mean I certainly like airbrushing myself, if you've seen any of my tutorials you'll know. So, without further ado, let's get on to it with the most expensive and most important piece of kit. <coughs> a compressor. This Sparmax is a two-piston oilless compressor. It fills very, very quickly. It's got a big old tank on it. I can't remember exactly how big it is, but it's about the same size as most air compressors of this price range. Pressure regulator, pressure monitor, water trap, which is important. Comes with a big hose, very nice hose actually, very good quality hose. And this big sturdy case with carry handle to protect it from knocks. It's also got some nice rubber feet on here so it doesn't vibrate and you can't hear it if you say downstairs in a different room or if you have downstairs neighbors like I do. So this is very good. I didn't start with this compressor though. I started with an AS186. Uh, it had no brand because it's basically a generic air compressor. It usually comes with an airbrush as well which is what makes it great for starting out. An AS186 is similar except that no protective case, no handle, it's a single piston compressor rather than a double piston compressor. It will also come with slightly lower quality parts so the pressure, pressure valve isn't necessarily very accurate. The regulator has a tendency to leak a little bit. The hose isn't anywhere near as nice and the water trap does not have this protective cover covering this glass, so you could smash it if you're a bit clumsy. All that said, an AS186 with airbrush will usually set you back about £90. One of these is much more expensive, especially once you, you know, factor in the cost of the airbrush that they use. So for starting out, I very much recommend the AS186, just so that you can get the hang of airbrush painting and see if you actually like it. Which bit's important? Well, the compressor fills the tank with compressed air. Pretty simple. The pressure regulator controls how much air is leaving the tank. And the pressure valve tells you what the pressure inside the entire system is. This currently has uh, 40 psi of pressure inside it, so almost three bar for those people who like the old measurements. And the water trap stops any water leaving the tank and going down the hose, which will eventually then come out of your airbrush. That's why the water trap is important. You can also empty the water trap by pressing on that, and the moisture will come out of it. Um, I never get into a situation where that's actually full, though. To change the pre air pressure, you will always have to pull your regulator up in order to be able to turn it. The air pressure will not change immediately, you will have to let some pressure out of the system if you want it to go down, or the compressor will have to turn up, turn on, in order to increase the pressure. It's basically how all air compressors work. All AS186s I've used have had slow leaks in them. Not here, which is the most likely place for a slow leak, you can fix this just with some Teflon tape in order to make the seal a bit better. But generally speaking, the slow leak has been somewhere between the compressor and the tank. And that's very, very annoying and very difficult to fix. What this usually just means though is that after about five, 10 minutes of sitting idle with the compressor off and you're not using your airbrush, the compressor will turn back on in order to regulate and maintain the pressure inside of the tank. With this Sparmax, if I don't use the pressure that's in here, it'll usually go 12 to 18 hours before it actually has to turn back on and start bringing the pressure back up. Which can be very surprising if you're watching TV at the time and thought you've turned your air compressor off. It's caught me out quite a lot of times. So generally speaking, most expensive bit of kit you'll need. Also the heaviest, very heavy things these. The carry handle is very, very helpful for being able to move it around the house. Especially if you're gonna put it away or put it in a cupboard when you're not using it. Getting one with a carry handle, very handy. Especially also this case means that if you do put it away, it'll go into a nice little boxy type area and you won't have to worry about knocking any of the moving parts. So that is your compressor. Your AS186 compressor will be very similar, but just not quite as good. Um, I think it's worth the extra money for getting the better guarantee 
and a better source of spare parts and repairs, as well as the better workmanship. It is far and away much better put together, even though the technology is essentially the same. Did I mention it's heavy? Once you've got your compressor, you'll want an airbrush. Odds are your AS186 kit came with an airbrush. If not, you can get one very cheap on eBay. Just look for the uh, blue colored foam here. But you want a dual action gravity feed rather than a siphon feed, which isn't really useful for miniature painting. In miniature painting, you're often changing colors fairly frequently. And with siphon feeds, you, that means you'd have to take off the pot, clean it, and then change the paint that's inside it. They're more useful for things that require large amounts of paint, such as really big model kits. Not so much for little miniatures that are only, you know, yay big. So what you want is your dual action gravity feed airbrush. You could get one of these, an Awata Neo. Don't get one. Awata Neos are overpriced. They're about 70 pounds for what is essentially exactly the same as the airbrush you will get with your AS186 starter kit. An airbrush that you can replace for about 10 to 12 pounds online. This is upside down. It will, however, look almost exactly like this. The difference will be blue foam and no laser etching a water brand on it. Otherwise, it will be the same airbrush. I do not recommend these because, well, just because they're overpriced. They're not bad airbrushes by any means, but they're just not worth the 70 pounds that you pay for them in the UK. But that being said, since I happen to have one of these and not one of the really cheap Chinese airbrushes, I'm gonna show you how a dual action gravity feed airbrush works using this as a demonstration. I'll also show you how to take it apart and put it back together again. Essentially, you put paint in the cup, gravity pulls the paint down into the well here, and then as you spray air by pressing this down, the air passes over the needle and as you pull the needle back, it increases the size of the hole in the nozzle and allows paint to be pulled by the air out of the end of the airbrush and then you can paint with it. That's essentially all it is. So that's pushing down for air, pulling back for paint. So this is essentially what you'll get. You can usually remove the top on some models you can't, I think on some badges you can't, for example. It comes with a different size little cup I generally never used anything other than the one it came fitted with. You can take that off, clean that with some airbrush cleaner, and no problems at all. Back here in the back of the airbrush, you can take that off. This is the trigger assembly and needle. So first we'll take the needle out. And this is basically the business part of the airbrush. This is what stops the paint going out of the nozzle and therefore also allows it by pulling it back. Do not bend or drop your needle. It will damage, they're expensive to replace. In fact, when it comes to the Iwata Neo, it's cheaper to buy a Chinese airbrush and use the parts from that to repair your Iwata Neo than it is to actually buy the parts from Iwata. On that step, in that case as well, since it's essentially the same airbrush, it's cheaper to just buy a new no-brand airbrush than it is to repair an Iwata Neo. This is your needle. This is a 0.5mm needle because I've replaced parts of this Neo. It normally comes with a 0.35mm needle. Generally speaking, you don't want to go below a 0.35mm needle for ac acrylics because they dry so fast it increases the opportunity for them to clog. You can then remove the trigger assembly just by unscrewing it. and then take your trigger out. And your trigger assembly is basically the spring that makes the trigger return to its normal position. Don't take this part, there's a small spring inside that will go spoink and you will lose it. You shouldn't need to clean this. This is the pressure regulator. As you see, press, when you press it down, it opens up and you get air from your compressor passing through it. Again, you shouldn't need to clean this part either. Then all you're left with is the body of the airbrush. You can take the tip off. Here, always use the correct size tip for the correct size needle, otherwise it won't work. And then you can see the nozzle. Here you can see the nozzle. Now Watta's instructions for the Neo specifically state to not remove the nozzle unless it is damaged or clogged. 
Unfortunately, as you're using acrylic paints and you're a new painter, it's almost certainly going to get clogged. You come with this handy little spanner, which you can use to just untighten the nozzle. You don't need to use it all the way. And then I usually find it's best to hold the nozzle and rotate the body to remove it. And this is the actual nozzle. One of these tends to cost about seven to eight pounds to replace, along with a needle. It is quite an expensive part to replace, and the Awata version is even more expensive. You can get off-brand versions of these from lots of airbrush supply places for a lot cheaper than a Iwata charge, and they're exactly the same. In fact, this one's slightly better because it's steel rather than brass, so it's more durable and less likely for the threads to break. This is the part of your cheap airbrush that is most likely going to break at some point. Either it will get damaged as a result of a bent needle trying to pass through it, or the threads will break, or something else will happen to it. If you over tighten it, the chances of the threads breaking are incredibly high. So you've got to be very, very careful when you take this off. It's unfortunate that if you're using acrylics, that they clog so very readily. If you aren't thinning your paints properly, or if you're priming a lot through the same airbrush, you'll often find you have clogs and will need to take the nozzle off in order to clear it, especially in the early days of learning how to paint, when you don't necessarily know how to thin your paints properly yet. Like I said, this is very, 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 very likely to be the part that breaks. Never put anything down your nozzle that wasn't designed to go down there. The only thing I actually use to clean my nozzles on all my airbrushes is a needle that is supposed to go inside that nozzle. And that's because it's just you know, much harder for you to actually break your nozzle if you're using the thing that is designed to go inside of it rather than something else. So there we have the Awata Neo broken down. This is also going to be pretty much what your AS-186 starter kit airbrush will look like. So let's put it back together again and I'm going to time lapse this. And there we have the airbrush is reassembled. It's important to note that while the Iwata Neo says it comes with a five-year warranty, it does not cover the normal wear, sorry, forcing a needle or tools into the nozzle and normal wear are not covered under the warranty. Normal wear. Nothing is actually covered in terms of the warranty for this item, unless it was damaged when you got it. That five-year warranty isn't worth the paper it's printed on. Stay away from the Awata Neo. It is an awful, overpriced piece of trash. Now, for those of you looking to spend a bit more money, and to be honest, if you're thinking of buying an Awata Neo, it's not that much more expensive to get one of these. The Hardware and Steenbeck Evolution is an excellent intermediate airbrush. This is what it looks like. If you get the two-in-one kit, you'll cut, get one with a 0.4mm needle and a 0.2mm needle. The 0.2 needle and tip and nozzle will be in a little tube like this, stored here. Usually comes with the 0.4 fitted. I generally only need to use the 0.4. For acrylic painting, 0.4mm is plenty. It's accurate enough. You don't need to go to 0.2. 0.2 is useful for things like inks or thinner paints, where you can get a very fine line. Again, for miniature painting, it's not really necessary. This is the Hardwin Steenbeck Evolution. You can also get the Evolution Silver line, which is safe for all, solv all solvent-based paints, such as enamels. It means that there are no parts that will degrade on exposure to the thinners that you use with those solvents, or the cleaners that you need to use to get the paint off. This is just a regular one because I only use it for acrylics. You've still got a cup. You put paint in, gravity pulls it down, air pulls the paint out when you pull the needle back. Again, it's press for air, pull back for paint. Exactly the same as any other dual action gravity feed airbrush. The difference is in the manufacture and how you take it apart and put it back together again and how you clean it. The Hardware and Steenbeck Evolution is basically their entry level product. Very, very well made for an entry level product, especially compared to things like the Badger 
and Iwata offerings. The Iwata offerings especially don't, you know, we've been over that. The principles are the same. All dual action gravity feed airbrushes basically work the same way. There are no significant differences there. The differences lie in how they are made and how you take them apart and put them back together again and how you clean them. The evolution, I find, is the easiest to maintain out of all of the airbrush brands that I've tried. Now it's worth noting I haven't tried Badger because in the UK Badgers are just too expensive for what you get. They have a very very high premium associated with them and I'm assuming it's because of import duties or something. But Badgers are not as cost effective in the UK or Europe as they are in America. So if you're in America these probably cost more than they're actually worth and Badgers are cost effective. In Europe Harder and Steenbecks, being made in Germany, are far more cost effective than Badgers. The Evolution comes apart in a very similar way to a standard dual action gravity feed airbrush. First, take off the back. You expose the trigger assembly, also known as the waist, and the needle. So, unscrew, remove the needle. Then you can unscrew the trigger assembly which these little rubber rings make it very easy to unscrew and it doesn't have such a long thread on it as the uh, Chinese airbrushes do. Again, don't take this apart. There's a spring in there that you will lose. You can then remove the trigger. The trigger will not remove until you remove the trigger assembly, which I like. Also means that you have to put the trigger in before you put the trigger assembly back in. It is also directional. This way it's got a grip like this, for extra grip. This way does not, you want it that way. Also, if you put it in that way, it'll bash up against the cup and you don't want that. This, while it looks like it may be a single part, is not, this is the pressure regulator. Again, you shouldn't ever need to clean this, so just take it off before cleaning. Remove the cup. Again, you can just clean this with airbrush cleaner. It's not necessary to actually uh, put it in with the rest of the parts when you clean the whole airbrush, say in the old Sonic cleaner. And then here we have the tip guard, which does remove. Some people say it doesn't, but it does. When you get it from the factory, it will be on there super tight and it'll be very difficult to remove, but it does come off. Then you have the actual tip itself. And here's where the magic's happening. This is the nozzle. You'll note it is significantly larger than the one in the Awata Neo, but vastly larger in fact. This makes it very difficult to lose, very difficult to damage, and it isn't threaded at all. The only part that is threaded is the tip, which is very, very easy to put on and off. The nozzle itself is just made of brass, or some kind of other brass, brassy looking alloy has a nylon o-ring on here, which you aren't going to be able to remove, don't even try, and just pushes in against the body. And then the top just holds it in place. It's an elegant design that works perfectly. I have never ever broken a nozzle by putting it in or taking it out on this airbrush. I've broken the nozzle by sticking things down, the, ch down the, the end that shouldn't have gone down there, but never as a result of the actual assembly and disassembly, whereas I have on plenty of the cheaper Chinese airbrushes. And once that's taken apart, you can then clean the body and the nozzle in an ultrasonic cleaner, no problem. Okay. Here's our Hardwind Steenbeck Evolution disassembled. As you can see, all of the same parts exist. The difference is in how they're designed, how they go together, how they come apart, and how difficult it is to actually break them. With that said, let's reassemble it. So there we have it, reassembled. The waste can be a bit tricky to get on sometimes, but generally speaking, the fact that you don't have to use a spanner to get the nozzle out means you cannot break the nozzle that way. 
So there we go. That's the difference between a very cheap airbrush and a moderately priced one. This one every time, to be honest. You've got your air compressor, you've got your airbrush. What more do you need? Well, there's something that you can get which will make your life a lot easier. It's not necessary, but it only costs you know a few quid, and that is a quick connect. Now, this comes in two parts. One part goes on the end of your hose, the other part goes on your airbrush. Once it's attached to the airbrush and the hose, you can now just plug your airbrush into the hose and you have air. Without this, every time you unscrew your airbrush from the hose, you're gonna lose all of the pressure that's in your tank. With this, you can just swap it out really easily. If you're buying a Badger airbrush with, without a Badger air compressor, you will need an adapter to be able to make your air hose fit your Badger airbrush. Harden Steenbeck and Iwata have the same connectors, which is a standardized airbrush air hose connector. Another piece of useful equipment, the spray pot. This serves two purposes. One, it gives you somewhere to put your airbrush. Two, you can clean your airbrush out into this spray pot. And this means that you aren't cleaning out into say a cup that's gonna cause blowback or out into the air where you're gonna breathe it in or it will go all over your stuff. Instead, all your paint ends up inside this glass container where it is nice and safely contained and you can clean it out later. There's also usually a filter in here, I've run out, which will stop any nasty fumes from any solvent-based paints that you're using coming back out. It's generally not completely necessary. I ran out a very long time ago and I've not needed to replace them. It's also got a little handle for carrying it, but mostly it's very useful for this. If you've bought an airbrush, then you no longer ever need to use a rattle can to prime again. Some people still do, but you don't need to. Instead, you can just get some airbrush primer. These are the ones that I use. This is Vallejo Polyurethane Acrylic Primer. I have a big bottle of the black and a small bottle of the gray, because I prime black more than I prime gray. The only downside to this primer is while it's got excellent paint adhesion, it doesn't adhere to the models fully for the first few hours. It takes about two to three hours to cure properly after you've applied it, whereas with rattle cans, it's usually good to go straight away. It's touch dry in just a few seconds, so you, know, you can pick your model up and you can put it down in order to be able to actually have it dry off. It has a slightly satin finish, but is generally pretty matte and pretty good, and is one of the better primers that's available out there. Stein Badger's Steinol Res is also popular, but generally speaking, there's not a lot in it between these two brands. For thinning airbrush paints, and you can thin any paint to go through an airbrush, airbrush ready paints just means they need slightly less thinning than normal. I use Galleria's Flow Improver. It's Winsor Newton Galleria Acrylic Mediums. It's their Flow Improver. There's two different kinds. This kind I can get at the range, which is near me. Um, there's another kind, which is their professional version. I haven't used that, but I understand that it's basically the same stuff. I use this diluted one part flow improver to 20 parts water, which is what's in here. And this is all I use to thin paint. I don't use any other additives or any other mediums, just the flow improver plus water. This is all I need. The flow improver breaks down the surface tension of the paint and the water actually thins it. I only ever usually need about one to two drops of this in any Games Workshop paint in order to make it go through the airbrush nicely. You will also need something to clean your airbrush with. There are two kinds of cleaning. There's be cleaning between paint colors, and then there's deep clean. For cleaning between paint colors, you can use Vallejo's airbrush cleaner, which I don't currently have, but I have used in the past, and it is very good, albeit a bit expensive for what you're getting. Or this stuff, windscreen wiper fluid. Don't get the stuff for winter with loads of antifreeze in it. You get the regular stuff. I mean, generally speaking, I don't recommend you get this. This is just what I happen to use, and I know a lot of other hobbyist airbrushers use this as well. And that's because you can get five liters for not very much money. And it is basically a low percentage alcohol and detergent mix, diluted in water already. And uh, it works really, really, really well for cleaning airbrushes. Certainly, certainly since I've started using it, I've not had any problems with clogs between paint colors whatsoever. This stuff works brilliantly. 
but rather than use it in this big, big old bottle, I decant it into a little pump. So I just got this pump off Amazon, so it's a pack of five or something, and it just lets me squeeze it into my airbrush, or all over my hand, into my airbrush, and then I've got my cleaner in there. The pump action actually helps kind of agitate the paint that's in the bottom of the cup as well, which is dead useful. You can then, if you take the needle protector off, you can then back flush by covering up the end, so run air, pull the needle back and cover it and you'll get air going back into the cup. Now, that will agitate everything that's in the cup. Some people use that to mix paints. Don't do that, that is actually a terrible idea. Generally speaking, you don't want anything going up this way in the airbrush. Cleaner is fine because you're cleaning the airbrush. It's not going to solidify and become solid and then stop your needle from being able to move. If you back flush mix with paint, what's gonna happen is paint isn't just gonna come out here, it's gonna go back up the needle and that's going to result in clogs occurring back here, which are very difficult to clean and will result in your needle sticking. Do not back flush mix your paint. It is not a big problem to use a paintbrush to mix your paint in the cup or to mix your paint outside of the airbrush and then pour it in. None of that is a difficult thing to do. Back flush mixing is just a terrible thing that's gonna just make your life more miserable in the long run than it saves in the short run. Back flush cleaning, however, is very useful for making sure that any paint that has, you know, kind of snuck up the needle gets cleaned out. Also between paint colors, it's useful to just pull out the needle, give it a bit of a wipe, and then put it back in. You wanna run water or airbrush cleaner through your airbrush until it's spraying clear. Once you've got no more paint coming out, it is then ready for the next color to go in. And as long as you do that, you shouldn't get any clogging. For a deep clean, I recommend an ultrasonic cleaner. You can use isopropyl alcohol if you want, but I generally find ultrasonic cleaner is much easier. This one only cost me 20 pounds off eBay. It's for jewelry and it works fine. It used to have a little plastic basket in there, but I accidentally broke that. This in here is just water with some detergent in it. This is regular old dish soap. Just a couple of drops in some clean water. That's all you need to clean your airbrush between sessions. Put all your parts in there. First, a warning about ultrasonic cleaners. If your airbrush has a large number of rubber O-rings in it, you probably shouldn't use an ultrasonic cleaner to clean it, as the action in the ultrasonic cleaner can degrade rubber O-rings quite easily. However, if you have a hardwind Steenbeck Evolution, the only parts that you need to clean in an ultrasonic cleaner is the body and the nozzle. Everything else can be cleaned by regular methods. And these parts do not have any rubber O-rings involved. All of the seals are nylon and they will not get damaged by the ultrasonic cleaning process. On the cheap Chinese airbrushes and I believe badgers as well, these parts will have some O-rings in them, most notably around the nozzle. So all you have to do for the Hardwind Steenbecks Drop the nozzle and the body in your ultrasonic cleaner and set it going. Once it's done, your water will be warm to the touch and there should be some grime and other bits of paint floating around in your water, but your parts will be clean. Dry them off, reassemble your airbrush, and that's all you should need to do. This is not completely 100% necessary, but it is incredibly useful to have. It is an airbrush extraction booth. Essentially, behind here, we've got a fan, some foam. Most of the paint particulate gets caught in this rather than going anywhere else. This booth, as long as you do all of your, air, your airbrush spraying inside of this booth, while it's turned on, which it's loud. See, pretty loud. Like most things in airbrush painting, it gets loud. It just sucks everything that's in here out that grey tube, which you can poke out the window. You only have to have the window open a crack because the tube itself is actually just kind of like a slot shape rather than actually being a, a big roundo. It usually comes with a terrible, terrible little kind of um, spinny dolly thing. Uh, it's not like this. This one's made out of an old cake stand and uh, one of these things I've forgotten the name of. 
which moves much better and freer than the one that you'll get with it, which will be plastic and awful. You can find you can find these on Amazon. Um, generally, I found that I need to add duct tape and modify it a little bit in order to stop air getting out because of the folding nature of the design. It is collapsible. It does break down into quite a small area, but I leave mine set up, so I've just ended up sealing all of the corners and the edges. I'm not worried about this side here, but you can see how paint can easily get out of there. Because I always paint this way. I sealed this side up with duct tape so that the paint doesn't go out into my work area. This is incredibly useful. If you don't have one of these, then you're going to end up with a thin film of black paint or primer or something, whatever you're spraying through your airbrush, over everything in the same room that you're using your airbrushing. If you don't have one of these, at the very least, get a, get a mask. You can usually get these in packs of like five to 10 or something. You only need the kinds for particulate matter. You don't need the kinds for toxins or um, dangerous chemicals. You just need the kinds that are basically for painting. You can find them in any hardware store. But ever since I've had one of these airbrush booths, I have not needed to wear a mask. You know if you need to wear a mask because when you've been, after you've done airbrushing and you sneeze, it comes out black. That's a true story. That's the airbrush extraction booth. Dead handy, nice to have, not completely necessary. All right, quick fire round. Things that are just generally quite useful to have when airbrushing. Toothpicks. Dead useful for mounting things on them, also for occasionally getting little bits of stuff out of your airbrush. Get the wooden ones, dead cheap. No worries. Masking tape. This is Blue Painter's tape. I use this, uh, well, actually I don't use this one. I use Tamiya masking tape. Tamiya masking tape is very low tack, specifically designed for model painting. It is very unlikely to remove paint from your models when you lift it up. This stuff is absolutely amazing. Get a pack with all the different sizes in if you're doing a lot of vehicles. Very useful for doing camouflage, just masking off you know, different bits on vehicles in general. Post attack. Useful for masking off other parts of models that are irregular shapes. It can be stretched and bent into different shapes on irregular models. Also useful for doing camouflage. Double-sided tape. This stuff is useful for sticking very, very small parts to things like coffee stirrers, so that you can hold them in place when you're airbrushing without any problems whatsoever. Plastic cups. Useful for just emptying your airbrush into if you don't have a spray pot, also for mixing paint in. I recommend the little plastic shot glasses, but this is all I currently have. Q-tips, or cotton buds. Very useful for cleaning up the cup of your airbrush when you've got little bits of paint floating around in there. Again, cheap, get them from the supermarket. Not a big deal. The big fluffer. If you've seen my painting video, you know all about this. Very, very useful. Always dust your models before you start airbrushing them. Otherwise, your paint will just stick the dust to the model and you'll get a little bump on there. Always, always dust your models before painting. I think that is pretty much it. Yep, that's it. That's my airbrush essentials list. Everything can be bought from the Amazon store in the link down below in the doobly-doo. If you liked this video and it helped you get started with airbrushing, then leave a comment, smash that like button, um, uh, all that other stuff that YouTube's supposed to do. And it really helps me out if you do go to visit and buy things via the affiliate link in the description below, because, you know, Amazon gives me some money then, and it doesn't cost you anything. So, everyone wins. Apart from Amazon. But, screw Amazon. If you liked this video, then you can see more by subscribing up there. You can also check out my Patreon, where you can get early access to video tutorials and colour guides for painting down there. YouTube thinks you might like this. And over here is my social medias, where you can check out stuff and all things that I say. Thank you for watching my video. I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.